Okay folks, I realize I haven't done a simple thread blend coronamid for a while and so I'm going to do the bleeding olive. It's got a red tag or butt, uh, the res residual hemoglobin in the larva and then it uh, fades to olive green with a copper rib on there. Fairly simple tie, nothing much to it, but uh, I've got a Togan's number 12 curved scud hook in here with a 764 brown magic bead. One of my favorite beads for uh, for trout fishing. And I'm going to come in with my red 70 denier thread here, just up behind the eye. Knock that bead back out of the way for a few seconds as I get the gills set in here. And I'm going to use some uh, Antron wool here, yarn, and give that a cinch on there and then lift up the yarn and give it I like to give exactly always four wraps I don't know why I stuck on four but it seems to work for me then bring the thread back cut off the tag end of the yarn and then uh, just a touch just to, just going to give it a half hitch here and cut off the thread and any super long fibers there. We'll get those later mostly when we shorten the gills. Now a touch of brushable super glue just on the bottom side of that thread to uh, secure the threads and the bead up at the front there. And there we go. Got that bead secured up front and that pushes all those fibers to the, the front end of the hook. And I like to trim mine now uh, about the same length as the eye and any super long ones get uh, brushed cut off too. There we go, we've got our gills and our bead in there, the head of the fly. Now, when you're tying a thread blend, the color that's toward the tail, the color that you want to peek out there at the butt end is the color you use as the first one on the fly. So I'm coming in here with the th red thread because I want red to be the color at the butt of the fly. And I'm coming in with a small UTC copper wire in the natural. I like the uh, color contrast this copper wire gives and I'll just get that cinched in there behind the bead and tucked in to my side of the hook and then hold it on my side as I wrap the thread back and just keep that copper wire on my side of the hook so it's not twirling around. This is one of my favorite colors for uh, when I'm fishing green chronomids, uh, I don't know why, but uh, black uh, also often retains a red butt of the hemoglobin, but green seems to me uh, to be more predominant that way in keeping the, the red butt as the, the pupa rise to the surface, especially when they're staging early down in the near the bottom and they've just uh, metamorphized from the larva to the pupa. So I'm, I lift the copper wire and I'm going to give it about a half a dozen wraps in here behind. This gives a nice tapered point tail to the fly and then bring that red back forward. I always like my uh, ribbing to start somewhere up the fly, not right at the, the butt. Just a, there's that slight, I'll just point it at you with my, my bodkin, there's just that slight bit of color behind the wire there that I like because I like the copper wire to start part way into the tail of the fly, not right at the tail. So I give that a half hitch. I'll give it another one to secure it. I don't remember if I did it. And then cut it off and then we're going to come in with our olive wire, olive thread. Now that's our covering color. And that will come back just short of the wire. Now we'll get that on there. And you can see the olive color start to build up. Like I said, it's a fairly simple fly. I like to go back a little ways just to make sure that tag end is well secured in there. And then I'm going to cover that red as smoothly as I can to within probably a sixteenth of an inch of the, uh, the wire, really close. The, um, when you put the resin on, it will, on the thinner part of the covering, here the, the green covering on the red is going to be a lot thinner than it is up here. And so the red will bleed through when you put the resin on. So I like to go in really close to the wire because that red is now uncovered behind the wire and then a little bit in front and then it bleeds through so it's starting to fade and change 
and that till it till it goes to the solid green here. So I like to go really close to that that wire, like about there, and then come forward again. Now I don't want to build up too much bulk back there, so that'll be all the green that that gets. And like I said, the resin will bleed through that, and the the, uh, the color will bleed through. Now I'm going to go back to about the point of the hook here now. Hang my thread there. Another wrap. That's a good time to unwind the thread now. Flatten the, the thread out. I like to run my fingers down it. Uh, as uh, in the uh, a la Mark Yurigawa style to flatten that thread. And he's, uh, he's an excellent BC tire well worth emulating some of his practices, especially on chronomids. Uh, check out his flies, Yoda flies. I, I mean, he's got some really excellent patterns on that channel. And there we go, we've locked it in. And I'm just going to give a little bit more to the front because I want that solid green. I don't want it, and I'm unwinding the thread, flattening it, and I'm just going to go back just a smidge, not as far as the point, and then back forward again. Build up those shoulders just a little bit. Okay, now we come through with the copper wire, five to seven wraps, one, two, get those spaced right, three, four, five and a half, and then I bring the thread behind it a couple of turns, one, two, three, then one in front, then one behind, and one in front. Really helps secure that wire so that when you helicopter it, it doesn't, uh, doesn't release the end. So I like to go back and forth a few times. And then we'll just give that a helicopter to snap it out. And off it comes. Now I'm going to bring my whip finish tool in here. Give it a spin. I've got a little room to play with. Two, three, four. And we can cut that off nice and tight to the fly. Now the, the uh, resin I like is uh, Gulf Thin Man. Uh, Loon Outdoors makes another really great thin resin for chronomids, but I find that because it's so thin, it saturates the thread quite a bit and causes that red to bleed through even right up behind the bead. And I want that thread relegated to the back there. So this Gulf Thin Man is my preferred for uh, blended thread chronomids. I see I've got too much on there so I'll use my bodkin to thin that out, thin out the thin man to remove the excess. Just make sure it's got a thorough covering there too and we get that anything that looks like excess on there off. And then I'm coming in with my um, UV light. Now I understand I haven't tried uh, Radzap or Solares but uh, I'm sure they're great resins too. I don't know their effect. So whatever resin you have, you'll have to experiment to see how much it causes the colors to bleed through. And you can see now by looking at this, you can see that red bud on there and it transitions nice and smooth to the upper part of the body, which is that light olive green. Those brown magic beads are absolutely the, the ticket on these things. I love those things. They're a great uh, bead color. Uh, do the trick for me. And then that white tuft of gills just to complete the illusion of the fly. And I give that a good long zap there with the uh, UV light. And then we're going to finish off and coat this. Now one of the things I do is I coat it with Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails. The UV resin I found at times, doesn't always do it, but at times if it sits in the fly box a year or more it can go foggy on you. And a coat of Sally Hansen's will prevent that from happening. So I'm coming in now with the Sally Hansen's and then we'll let it set it side to dry. Just a very thin coating. I wipe the, most of it off the brush and I see I've got too much on there so I'm going to be clearing that off of there with the uh, bodkin again. And just get that excess off the underside there. There we go. We've got a nice tapered fly. Convincing colors. Does the job. Hey, if you enjoyed that video, please consider subscribing to my channel and uh, I'm wishing you the best of luck out there. Hope you enjoy this fly. Again, you can play with the different colored threads. You can play with yellow browns, other things like that. It's really simple. Just make sure that 
The tail color is the one first thread you put on. The covering color comes second. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you on the water.